if anyone's followed my project on the four-way tool post which I started quite some time ago and uh, we did a video on it which actually changed part ways through as I modified a newly acquired quick change tool post uh, but the actual intention is still to finish my clone of a four-way and this is the one anybody who didn't see it before uh, it's pretty straightforward this one's actually milled from solid and it has a three-quarter vertical space for tooling but I don't often use much more than um, three-eighths and a half inch securing bolts all the way around the top and handle t-nut underneath that's all there is to it however I didn't have a chunk that uh, I could make in one piece what we're doing is making a sandwich and you've probably seen me refer to it two or three times uh, but the main problem is getting the main material out of it out of the two pieces so that when they are machined and sandwiched together we'll have a five-eighths uh, space for tooling all the way around right well we need a t-nut for the new four-way tool post when I get the two pieces of stock back from the guy who's milling out the uh, relief for me <coughs> we'll work out a way to sandwich them and uh, uh, we're going to need a t-nut so I've just cut off a chunk of inch by three quarter which needs facing down a bit to reduce the overall height I'm um, using a fly cutter rather than a mill uh, fly cutter does quite a good job this is basically just the last cut now or should be so we'll just run this through and um, move on to the next step after that Going a bit tighter. Here we are. It's not too bad. Finish isn't critical. Actually, feels quite good. So the fly cutter does the job all right for that. But the uh, you might possibly see the scribe lines. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a vertical scribe line there. And there are two other little lines there and there, which represent the uh, the form. So we've actually got to just remove, as it is here, top and bottom, just to get the width relief across here. Nothing very complicated, just tedious. And uh, then we'll drill and tap it. So it's just one thing to get done in advance. And because, as is obvious, I'm using my vertical slide, I've been taking pretty light cuts. I haven't got the rigidity for uh, really hard cuts. But, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So we'll probably set up a small mill and uh, relieve the two sides of this chunk. Just got a six, uh, six flute end mill in here. It's in the lay, in the chuck. It should have been in a collet, but I can't be bothered. This is any just basic material removal. I've just taken a light cut, we've got a lot more to go. tend to make the starting cuts 
a bit lighter than later. Uh, this should be the last cut on this side, I think. Just another few now to take off. another I want to get onto the scribe line get another five thou better to be just a little over than a little under anyway the next thing is we'll uh, change the positioning and start on the other side well we're set up for the top side here just taking about two or three thou cut just to check and we're pretty much on the money at the moment for the uh, trying to get the light without too much reflection the uh, scribe line we're pretty much on it maybe just a little bit into it but uh, this doesn't want to be oversized so we can carry on and get all the way through this uh, side Well, that's the start of that cut. We've got a little way to go. It's coming up quite well. Just taking a small finishing cut on the uh, top side here. should be about there we we'll just have to uh, wind back and check the dimensions well the end finish isn't too important on this it's only a teen up top surface there a lot of uh, reflection that's just the uh, fly cutter finish which is quite adequate just took some material off about a uh, tenth of an inch and the uh, sides, not too bad. All right, just pop a centre drill in here. I like to get the centre drill in pretty well to uh, give a nice start on the next drill. I'm going to be using 7 sixteenths by 14 TPI for the, uh, the draw thread down the centre of the tool post into the T-nut. Uh, we need a 9.4 tapping drill so we got that in and uh, we'll just try and get that run through we have enough pressure on there this is uh, a bit that's got a special sharpening angle That's well once you get in. <laughs> but 
breaking through. Plenty of swarf. Yeah, I had about a chattery start on that until it gets pressure on it. Uh, we've got a countersink now. Be very careful with the uh, speed and feed. Countersinks just love to chatter. Now we'll set up for a tap. Well, this is an example of using. Uh, I put this tap starter in the uh, drill press here. Oops, it's come undone. Let's do, do that up. I described this in one of my gadgets and gizmos things. I made it a long time ago. It's only to get a couple of turns to start. Now if I undo that, it can drop down in, into the workpiece. Let's just zoom in a little bit. All right, so we drop down into the workpiece. Now we can start to turn, providing the Jacobs chuck will hold the tap. This tap is a little bit large actually. The chances are it'll slip in the Jacobs. Let it start. It's a pretty coarse thread too anyway. So, oops, just beginning to, just beginning to let go in the Jacobs. Might be able to tighten that a little bit more. I tend to limit this to taps of about a about a quarter inch. And the reason I go a little bit and back off and a little bit and back off is so that the Jacobs will keep a bit of a grip on it. I'm not mounting the chuck. You notice I do some things a little bit lazy and sometimes the slow way as well. Let's just break that free there. There we are. So we've probably got a couple of turns started. Now we got the sun streaming through the window and probably making the lighting a bit tricky for the exposure. Anyway, having got that couple of turns start and I can't find my medium size uh, tap wrench. So I'm doing this with a little bit of extra effort. There's a little bit of extra lube. You really want the... Uh... I've got a number 7 tap wrench, but that'd be like using a sledgehammer to crack a walnut. So I'm only using this little fella. coarse thread it's quite a bit of cutting to do all right we're through ah oh, boy let's bring that up now a little bit there we go what a I wish I'm out of breath being an old fella <laughs> Oh dear. There we go. Let's uh, just blow some air over here and get the... Well, I've gone in from the bottom. We can clean up the top in a minute. Tapping fluid everywhere. 
I tend to use these soft jaws in this vise more often than not. Let's see what we got here. So to see. This is just a long length of studying, quickest. Quickest way out. There we are, that's uh, That's pretty much the finished tea nut. Not a perfect finish, but it's functional. So after all that work, the next thing is, I've just heard that my blocks have been finished. And uh, I hope to pick them up tomorrow and then we can press on with the main work instead of fiddling around with little tea nuts. <laughs>